Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play the Banner Saga. Last time we were still at the main city. We're trying to figure out how to deal with the situation, destroying the bridge or fighting on the bridge. And we ended up fighting on the bridge and we just finished the fight. And I think it went rather well. You be the judge. You saw it last video. If you didn't, then whatever. Don't feel like watching my the rest of my video. Enough of this, groans Ivor, who seems to have snapped out of his daze. This is getting us nowhere. You follow as he climbs the stairs and throws open the doors of the Great Hall. Ra! That's throwing the doors open. Ivor! Remember last time I said I'm going to call him Ivor from now on, because that's his name, and I, I don't I feel like pronouncing Y-N-G-V-A-R. Glad to see you well. You swear you catch a note of trepidation in the king's voice. Yorinder, enough. This fight cannot be won. Again this? I'll be damned if that bridge falls during my reign. You'll let our whole race die. We'll all be gone someday, Ivor. I need not tell you. There are no more Vol being made tomorrow, or a thousand years from now. We are it, and I will not destroy what we have made. Would you leave no trace of us when we are gone, as if we never existed? I kn Nice arm, by the way. I know this, but yours is one voice of many. I know that the Varl are equal, the days of Kender are over. I ask these Varl, all there is left in the world, to follow me and live another day. Who do you think they will choose? The weight of the air in the Great Hall becomes so thick it nearly suffocates you. The silence continues for ages. Go on. Take the Mender. Destroy the bridge. Do it and leave. Take whoever would join you and do not return to my city. The alliance of man and Varl is through. Ivor is almost out of the door before Yorinder has finished his sentence. Well then. Led by Ivor, the Varl push hard one last time against the dredge until there is room enough for Ivan to take position and start raining down lightning bolts on the bridge supports. <coughs> Before long, the masonry is a shattered mess and begins to give under its own weight. Varl and dredge alike race to escape the collapse. When the dust clears, there's a gulf between you and the furious dredge. They won't be crossing this way. You've gotten what you wanted, says Yorinder. Now leave. If I ever see man or mender again, it will be too soon. Ivan tells you Juno will be waiting for us in Sigurholm. Despite the end of the immediate threat, many Varl choose to join Ivor instead of following Yorinder. You depart with a long caravan at your heels. Of our bones the hills. Chapter 6. In correction, according to my colleague, who's also doing this NLP of this, there are seven chapters total. So we are kind of almost done. I expect, who knows, between five and seven videos probably. I don't know how many fights they're going to throw my way. Uh, let's, let's stretch while we're walking. Prepare for the fight. Uh, it is a sunny day out. Sunny but cold. It's freezing as hell outside. An old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost, you ask? He adjusts the leather strap on his head and says, No, are you? He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons, but I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his beard over his shoulder, and puffs up his chest. The fighter grins and the stranger exhales, asking, What are we waiting for? Lead the way! Let's see. You're welcome to join if you can keep pace? Yeah, why not? Keep pace. The old man puffs through his must mustache. No fleeter than old Unarlar. And husbands, mind your wives. I'm cursed with the golden tongue, not silver. The caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start moving once again. Okay, whatever the hell that meant. I don't know what the heck he said. And I don't really care. Good for you. Welcome aboard. Snow everywhere. Ugh. This water is the only thing keeping my voice going. A group of men with broad shoulders and thick cloaks approach the caravan. They might be outlaws you hear nearby, and the idea quickly ripples through the clansmen. One of the strangers approaches, saying, We've run out of food. Any help would be welcome. His hard eyes reveal nothing of his motivations. You consider how you will want to approach this. Hmm. Fight with us and earn your food. The men look surprised by your offer. In short order, they join the caravan and start sharing tales and drinks. Unfortunately, it is less than a day later that you discover they vanished along with a sizable portion of my supplies. I only have two days of supplies left. I'm going to start losing people. Shite. Wow, they are scumbags. This is bad. I'm not going to make it. 
This is the first time I had to worry about food. It appears that large figures following from the direction of Iron La La La. Oddleaf watches intently before finally saying, They have a cart, I can hear it. You slow to get a better view and spy a small caravan of all. Eventually they catch up. Hey, it's Ubin! The guy who does nothing but carry his quill! Welcome! Glad to see you again. Greetings, Ivor. It's been quite a while since we talked, hasn't it? I know you. Ubin, never managed you to be one to defy the king. What made you leave? Someone had to. What do you mean? Bella was heading this way. Already? How is that possible? A group of all from Wormtoe showed up around the back of ah, la, 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 the long way. Bellower and his army chased them around the summer path, they said. Past Wormtoe? That doesn't make sense. Bellower was at the bridge. He must have double backed after that serpent appeared. While we fought on the bridge, he led half his forces around to approach. I'm going to call this Var Varltown. I am not. I don't. I don't feel like pronouncing that. I'm going to call it Varltown. Okay. So Ironatafata is Varltown from behind. The attack on the bridge was faint. Don't let anyone tell you the dredge aren't clever. Varltown will fall within a day. Maybe not, he's following you. I thought one of you might know why. You exchange nervous glances, but nobody speaks up. Must be me, then. Is there something I don't know? That's quite a grudge he's holding if he's coming for you, Ivor. It doesn't matter. Our only chance is to get to Sigurholm. Juno will know what to do. We'll join you. I come bearing supplies and warriors who would be happy to kill a dredge or two, I believe. Yes. I don't know how long 30 supplies are going to last, but... Okay, six days. That's way better than nothing. My voice feels like crap! Oh. Ugh. One more sip. One more gulp of water. Okay. The caravan stops at a split in the road. The head the path leads to Sigurholm veers off into the hills, which are now swimming with familiar black shapes. Dredge that way too, grimaces Ivan. The summer path leads straight to Sigurholm. While taking the main road, it will add several days. They're every way by now, replies Ubin. I suggest we go around past Hawksdorp. Let's send scouts. You send two scouts, only one returns. I'll put it this way, he says. We're not getting through that way. It's like they're emerging from the rock itself. Take the main road past Hawksdorp. I hate to say it, you tell Ivan, but I'm not willing to walk into swarms of dredge anymore. Juno will have to wait. You turn towards the long round of long round around Hawkstorp instead, hoping you save lives in the process. So is this some sort of detour then? Is this the longer way there? Because I still want to see Juno. <clears throat> Ugh. Hey town, I made it. Awesome. Let's buy supplies. A woman's stifled screams failed to overly concern anyone. It was only a matter of time before the expected mother gave birth. The caravan is simply excited by this first sign of new life since the trip began. Let's... Hmm. Let's call it a day of rest and celebration. I could afford one day. When the baby's cries replaces the mother's, the entire caravan cheers. You raise your drink to the family, saying, Tomorrow we rest and feast to strength and long life. Again, everyone cheers, glad to forget their worries for some small time. We made it, with zero days left. Thank God. You enter a village of miners who want to know what has been happening recently between the rumblings of the quake and sightings of dredge in the distance. As you look around, you see a lot of elderly and children, and know that these people will only be more mouths to feed. Let them make their own decision, I don't care. You welcome anyone who wishes to join Caravan. Many do, while others choose to stay in their homes. Now. Market! Yes, I need the market. Some of this stuff. Let's see what some of this stuff does. Alright. I need supplies. Okay. Wow, it is expensive. Nine days worth of food? Alright, let's, let's stick with that for now. And, because uh, I want to spend some points leveling people up. Let's see. Oh, there are a couple people that want to level up. Shoot. What do I do? What do I do? Let's do you. Alright, let's see. What do I want to give you? Let's do that. Let's make you big and strong. Strong bones. And... That's four points available. What the heck? Okay. Well, in that case, let's see. I like your skill. I, uh, your shield break is crap. Yes. 
That is good. You have become a worthy foe. Or, not foe, ally. Okay. Ah, oh, I still have a bunch of points left. That's cool. Yes, promote you too. 20 points? What the heck? Fine. Okay. Uh, what is that? What does the chain do again? Exertion, amount of willpower you can use. All right. Here and here. Good. Go back and replace someone. Do I want to keep Ivor? Let's do this then. All right. I like this. <clears throat> Well, I'm out, of, I'm out of renown. I have nine days of supplies. I'm going to leave now. And hope that nine days of supplies... Within those nine days, I'll run into some more supplies, or else I'm screwed, and people will probably start dying. I think that's when I'll start losing clansmen, fighters, and Varl. Look at that, shouts one of your clansmen. The caravan stops to watch Dread pooling into the village. You just passed through. I hope anyone who stayed behind got out alive, says Alette, but you have your doubts. They're coming, says Ivor, pointing out a line of dredge, leaving the village and marching toward you. As you watch, the dredge in line front falls over. Then the one behind it falls as well. You hear twang to your left. Nid, the archery student of Odlifts, who you recall deftly shooting a snow rabbit, is firing arrows down the hill. Another dredge topples. That's incredible, says Odlifts, squinting. But we should get out of here. Um, Oz, right, let's go. But why don't you come with us the next time you want to try out that bow? You tell Nid, who nods, a smile on her face. Hey, a new archer! I don't think I want more, though. Because they aren't very sturdy. And I've got Alet, who's doing an awesome job. Oh, my voice. I'm gonna have to stop recording soon. Up ahead, a scout shouts some giant hall, but it's empty. You approach the structure, but recognize none of the markings. The walls seem unsteady at best, finally sleeping beneath the roof you overhear. Several families begin unpacking. We sleep in comfort tonight. Let's see. I could risk it. Let's risk it. Screw it. Cheers erupt as people flood into the building. Avaro leans against the supporting pillar. It cracks and brings down a portion of the massive roof, crushing a number of clansmen beneath it. You idiot. Sadly, the rubble is too deep to recover their bodies, and you leave the building behind with regret. Wow, that was stupid and depressing. It didn't say I lost anybody, though. What is that? What is this over here? A little hut? A TP? I feel like it's been years since I've said the word TP. It doesn't really come up in regular conversation. Alright, we're running into a ton of these monuments. Oh, la! Let's inspect this crap. Ah, oh, I see, they want to match it up. What a fun little thing. <laughs> the Godstone of Dunder passes around you. In the frozen climates here, it looks like the rock has split and is falling apart, held together only by the deep snow. Curiously, when standing between the sto Ugh. Ugh. When standing between the stones, the wind drops off, completely picking up again once you pass through. I almost wonder if we should rest here for the night, says Ivor, who seems to have noticed the same thing. With all the snow around it, the dredge might not even be able to find us. Let's stay here. You walk around camp before settling in. Along each strand of Dunder's massive beard is carved a different part of its history, and you turn your head to and fro to read it. <clears throat> While the Loom Mother was the first to create, she, she soon found out a counterpart in Dunder who embodied her ideals in a masculine form. Dunder took some of her creations, gave them beards, and showed them the secrets of smiting. Though many remember him just as fondly for teaching them games and songs of mirth. As the camp settles in, you notice a group of boys huddled around something. They show you an offering box, carved into the godstone itself. The box is an elaborate construction of interlocking pieces which slide around when touched. We can't get it open, they tell you. It's like a puzzle. Try to open it. The boys take turns working out the puzzle and give you tips when it's your turn. Though you don't seem to make much progress, eventually they leave to sleep until it's just you and a couple of other determined youngsters. Keep working on the puzzle box. It's hard to know how long you spend sliding around the smooth puzzle pieces, but when people begin emerging from their tents, you know you're in trouble. Exhausted from a long, sleepless night, worse still, the box remains closed as you shuffle warily along the leaving car. Uh, my voice hurts.
Give me a minute. Let's just, let's just end the video here for today. It's been a good 15 minutes. I won't be able to record again for the rest of the day. In any case, thanks for watching, and bye! My cousin says that the barrels in these warehouses might have stuff in them. Quick, while he's away, smash his barrels up and see what's inside. Unless you're too scared. Unless you're just a big blubbing girl. Come on! Except there's nothing in these barrels except... That's it, you Trust me, he's this kid deserves it. Right in the frickin' face. Get out of here. If you look on the top right, that's how much time I left.